So Charlie Kirk was speaking recently about sexual anarchy. But the other things he said are also interesting. <laughs> so you're gonna get distracted by the sexual anarchy comment and we're gonna focus on it, don't get me wrong. But I want you to listen to what else he's saying. The other thing, of course, you'll be distracted by is the fact that he lives like a capitalist every day and apparently couldn't afford a comb. So let's watch. I want every Republican out there to realize that when the Democrats are winning, they are rubbing it in our face. And some Democrat senators, some Republican senators are now coming up and they are stunned. How dare he do this? You think we're still living in the same country, don't you? Senators from South Dakota, Senator Portman, you think we're still living in the 1980s where the Democrats actually want what's best for America? And the Democrats want to destroy the country, we know this. This is not new stuff. It's not profound thinking. They want to see America completely obliterated, the Constitution shredded and remade in their own San Francisco, Brooklyn, Malibu, Manhattan image. Where there is no cultural identity, where you live in sexual anarchy, where private property is a thing of the past, and the ruling class controls everything. We know this. And Schumer is willing to get there. Schumer is willing to get it done. Republicans are not. Republicans are trying to protect a country that no longer exists. Okay, guys, there's so many hilarious things in there. And you guys are gonna get to decide for yourselves who's right and who's wrong in a minute. Um, but first, obviously, we have to talk about sexual anarchy. <laughs> um, so I wanted to play one more clip for you guys, just in case it wasn't clear enough. Sexual anarchy and sexual anarchy and sexual anarchy and sexual anarchy and sexual anarchy. First, he looks like Zoolander. <laughs> Second of all, why does he, the reason we played you that clip, why does he punch it like that? It maybe it's a Trump thing, Norway, Antifa, Babbitt. So he's like <laughs> sexual anarchy. All right. Uh, they, they're <laughs> such weirdos. I think the other stuff's more important. But Jared, do you have any idea what sexual what anarchy is and where I can get some? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you've already brought it, you lib. Uh, I, Marvin Gaye. Uh, originally, there was the cutting room floor. Name of his song was "Sexual Anarchy" and not "Healing." And he's like, "Let's go with healing. I think healing is going to work better." <laughs> what? 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 So, what happens with? Did he go on? Did he maybe continue on and go through another maybe twenty minutes about what sexual anarchy is? Um, uh, what was it? Tucker Carlson said the Starbucks is going to be forced to drink Starbucks, but if sexual anarchy, I'm not sure who's creating these rules, who's making you guys have to do this. I'm still trying to figure out if it's good or bad. I'm really trying. I'm, I wasn't prepared to talk yeah. about this yet, but I'm. I know I'm playing it over in my head. Like, what is sexual anarchy? Yeah. No. <laughs> First of all, I mean, I love this conversation. <laughs> it's so. I mean, this is who we have to debate. This is who we have to have arguments with. But if you think about sexual anarchy, which JR, JR just forced me to do, <laughs> okay. So there's going to be a twist in here. So. First of all, I assume he means generally like, oh, people are having sex in non-missionary position. Ah, sexual anarchy. Uh, Ken Cuccinelli, who was a top Republican mm -hmm. official in the state of Virginia, ran for governor, was the official nominee of the Republican Party, etc. Worked in the Trump administration later, tried to outlaw oral sex. Uh, but it, to be fair, sodomy overall. But I don't know if they, they know that oral sex is part of sodomy. No. Okay, but I guess that's part of sexual anarchy. Okay, <laughs> and so they try to tell you how to live your life down to which sexual position you should use, and if you don't use those pre-prescribed sexual positions, we're in sexual anarchy. Okay, so Cuccinelli actually tried to do that. Republicans actually supported him. Uh, if you're having oral sex, arrest them. They wanted people arrested. It's you can look it up. You can look it up. So now I know he's referring to gay people and trans, etc. So that's his way of saying like, <laughs> now you're gonna let everybody just love whoever they want and give everybody equal rights like they're Americans. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it's in the Constitution. We believe in it. You can look it up. 
that everybody's supposed to be equal in America. I know, but that doesn't apply to gay people, does it? Yes, it does, it actually does. It doesn't mean just straight white males get to be equal. That by definition is not equal, it means all of us. But um, I think that the other portion of it, it, like anarchy implies this is outside of our control and they're worried about it. Think about why they're worried about it. Number one, they want to control yourselves like lives like maniacs. The most private things in your entire life, they want big government to control it. But why do they want the people to have their sex lives controlled? Because they're worried that if you had sexual anarchy, you might like those things. Otherwise, why would you be worried about it? If you said to me, okay, you're gonna have sexual anarchy and then you could have sex with a penguin. I'd be like, <laughs> um, I'm not overly worried about it. <laughs> okay, yeah. I could have that freedom, but it not gonna change anything, right? But for them, they think, but what if it did change things? So what if we, we had sexual anarchy and all of a sudden I could have sex with guys? Well, then obviously people would start having sex with guys. Oh, I see. And now he just left it at that bizarre terminology. Other Dem Republicans have, and in the past Democrats, but <laughs> have filled in the blank. People like Alan Keyes, like, and he would say, like, well, if you don't make it, um, if you don't make people feel bad about being gay, then obviously everybody would have gay sex. I was like, obviously, really? <laughs> okay, interesting, interesting. And that's their mindset. Otherwise, why would you be concerned about the way, sexual anarchy? We want all you guys to have sexual anarchy. A, with the guy you just talking about. Hey, if you want to have whatever sex you want with another consenting adult, do it. Like I don't think about it. I don't worry about it. If I see a couple walking down the street, gay, straight, lesbian, trans. Again, I said this last week, I don't go home and continue to think about it. I said, oh, there's two people, oh, there's two more people. Why am I still thinking about it? I just don't understand it. And by the <laughs> way, so the anarchy is like, there's a release and there's suddenly this wild lack of control from the authority. So just in that terminology, it means if you're against sexual anarchy, that means you're for control over people's lives, control over what they do with someone who wants to do it with them in the comfort and privacy of their homes or car or wherever it is that you're not looking. So that's what you want, you want control over what, the way people interact with each other. Do you want to control how they say hi? Do you want to control the kind of handshakes you have? If somebody has too many dabs, do you get mad about it? Why do we care about how people interact with each other? And it's anarchy if you don't listen to what we tell you to do and then start flying this flag, talking about some give me liberty or give me death and, and, and you, you can take my gun from my cold dead hands, freedom, first amendment, all the stuff you spout and then next sentence you say is, wait, I don't get to control what you do at home? What kind of America is this? It doesn't make any sense, it doesn't make any sense. And the reason is because they need you to continue to be distracted. We're gonna go back to what, I'm going to go back to what we were talking about earlier with the Civil War people. They don't want that lady in that Civil War thing talking about we need Civil War. They don't want her to think about the actual things that they're doing, the actual agenda items, the actual policies that would help her life that she deserves for what she contributes to the country. They don't want you to think about that. They want you to think about someone's butt, their penis, and their vagina and how they use it all. That's what they want. And that's what you're focusing on rather than how you get medical bills in the mail and you don't know what to do with them or how you got yourself in that situation or how you avoided going to the doctor because you're like, I'm not gonna pay all that money. I don't know what they're gonna do, so I better not go in. You don't think about that, instead you think about which bathroom someone goes into. That's why they do it. Yeah, guys, it's absolutely mental, man. Who's gonna be their sex czar? Like, <laughs> who's the great overseer of what is the wrong <laughs> positions and the right positions and the right people and the wrong people that you could uh, sleep with or love, etc. I mean, Ben Shapiro wrote a, whole, wrote a whole book against porn. So, freedom, don't watch porn, okay? Don't do that sexually, don't get like that guy, okay? Would you, government tyranny, making me wear a mask so I don't get you a disease. But it's not government tyranny to microscopically analyze and control our sex lives, get out of our lives, you creeps. Okay, now the larger point. He's like, oh, the Democrats wanna um, destroy this country and they wanna shred the Constitution. Yeah. Uh, and they wanna get rid of private property because of the ruling class. Wait, hold on. 
Why would the ruling class want to get rid of private property when they have most of the private property? It doesn't even, look, they're not even trying to make sense. And it's just such an insult to their audience because they think these guys are schmucks. We could tell them anything and they'll believe it. We'll yeah. say that the largest corporations in the world that control our politicians, that give money to corporate Democrats and corporate Republicans are against private property. And people are like, oh, that's right. Amanda, corporations, they love giving money away. Really, then why are they paying you such crap wages? It doesn't look like they like giving money away. It looks like they like hoarding money, making a lot of money. You think a corporation is controlling Democratic and Republican leadership so that they make less money? <laughs> no, but nobody can believe that. No. So when we say they don't believe in the Constitution and they say we don't believe in the Constitution, there's a way to figure out who's right and wrong. You could read the Constitution. So I talked about it earlier in the show. They say Mike Pence could have just unilaterally made Trump president. Find it in the Constitution for me. And if that's true, you should let Kamala Harris know. Because then she can <laughs> unilaterally decide Biden's the next president. We don't. We can skip the whole election. Find it in the Constitution for me, would you? See, they're lying about what's in the Constitution. We're telling you the truth. And, and you and please verify, verify, I'm begging you to do research, right? They hate research, they hate facts, they hate science. They're like, oh yeah, 99% of the world's scientists say that you should take the vaccine and that it's safe. And look, this hospitals are filled with dying unvaccinated patients. And all the doctors are saying, and 99% of the world's scientists say that climate change is real and it's man-made. But my big sponsor is oil companies, that's who funds my show, so no. Do not believe in facts or science, believe in my propaganda. So if you think that the ruling class in this country does not want money, does not want their own property or their own wealth or their own capital, and, they're, and they pay off Democrats and Republicans to give it away, then you should believe Charlie Kirk. <laughs> but you would have to be, if you just think about it for a second, you'd have to be mental to believe that. No, what the ruling class is interested in is more money and more power. And that is why they give donations to yes, the great majority of the Republican Party, and yes, the great majority of the Democratic Party, so that they can control them to get make more money. Here, I'll give you one quick example. We cannot negotiate drug prices. That's insane, that is not free market at all. No other country does that. Because we're also the only country that allows corporations through PACs to give unlimited money to our politicians. Guess what they give them the money for? So that they could kill off their competition and say, "Oh yeah, we have patents that last 12 years now. It used to last five, and now it lasts 12. It kills off my competition. You can't even negotiate drug prices. I'm just going to tell you what you need to pay, and then the taxpayers, I get to rob them blind. Why? Because I already bribed the politicians. That's to get rid of." private property and to turn the country communist? No person that has even 10 IQ points could believe that. No, they're doing it for their own economic advantage. It's the exact opposite. It's capitalism that has run amok and become corporatism. So there is a right and wrong. You can figure out who's actually trying to destroy the country. You could figure out what's actually in the Constitution. And you could figure out the actual political force at play. Or you could trust Charlie Kirk to with your political ideology and apparently with your sex life because he wants to control. Exactly. It. There are a lot of great ways to watch the Young Turks, but is there a best way? Of course, the best way is to watch live. Tune in weekdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. You get our uncensored, unapologetic version of the news that you won't get anywhere else. Watch us live.